Transformer paralleling has five steps. Step one, conduct pre-tail board talk. Step two, arrive at work site. Step three, install and parallel transformer. Step four, remove old transformer. Step five, restore work site to a safe condition. Now let's look at some general principles. It is your responsibility to have the appropriate PPE for activities you are performing and to follow your utility's best practice methods for traffic control and tailboard planning. For more information, you can refer to the FUSE videos on PPE inspection, traffic control, and daily job planning. And remember, this video does not replace good workplace assessment that can vary with each specific job. Step 1. Conduct pre-tailboard talk has two key points. Review the preliminary job details, including location, materials, equipment, and allocation of personnel. This ensures proper planning for the execution of the job. Ensure equipment is operational before leaving for the work site. Equipment needs to be in proper working order to support the task. Step 2. Arrive at work site has three key points. If applicable, obtain appropriate hold off from the controlling authority. This ensures the protection of the equipment. Complete evaluation checklist of existing transformer and the location. This ensures details of the job plan have been considered and the appropriate transformer has been chosen for the job. Complete a visual inspection of the equipment and the surrounding conditions. This ensures the equipment is in proper working order to support the task and identifies the existence of hazards or insufficient clearances that need to be addressed before the work can begin. Inspect the conditions of the poles, conductors, hardware, support guys, and anchors, as well as electrical apparatus and travelers. Inspect circuits, pole lines, and circuit intersections. Be aware that insulated rubber or rigid cover-up, live line tools, web hoists, and temporary conductor supports may need to be cleaned and dried. Step three, install and parallel transformer has 11 key points. Install cover-up as required. Frame the pole. This includes finding the proper location for the switch bracket. Install transformer on the pole and complete the appropriate grounding. Install ground rod and ground wire connection. Install switch and complete appropriate wiring. Complete secondary neutral connection, which includes taking the second hot leg of the transformer and connecting it to the secondary neutral bus. This avoids possible face-to-ground and face-to-face -face flash contact. Ensure the first and third secondary leads are clear and controlled from the secondary bus. Install liveline clamp on the predetermined phase using approved liveline tools. Close switch using approved liveline tools and with approval from the controlling authority. Make proper selection on the meter and check secondary voltages at the bus and the new transformer. This ensures the integrity of the meter and that the new transformer is functioning correctly. And the bus reading should be as close to zero as possible. Identify the correct phases and mark them with phasing tape. Connect the secondary hot legs, as marked, to the secondary bus. Step 4. Remove old transformer from the system, has four key points. Isolate secondary leads of existing transformer and ensure that it is secure. To avoid a possible flash, always cut secondary leads from the old transformer first, avoiding dropping transformer windings. Open primary disconnect switch and remove live line clamp from the primary. Cut and remove the neutral from the line and cut and remove all grounds. Then you can remove the transformer. Remove the old nomenclature from the old transformer location and install a new nomenclature to the new transformer location. Step 5. Restore worksite to a safe condition has three key points. 
Remove all cover up. Surrender hold offs. Work has been completed and hold offs are no longer required. Remove traffic control devices and equipment. Now the takeaway. Be mindful of the limits of your equipment and never exceed the manufacturer's specifications. By following the best practice methods of the manufacturer and your utility, you establish a safe work area for you, your coworkers, and the general public.